The toe box is finished and in preparation for wiping in the toe, I'm going to wet down the leather. I like to pull the leather back away from the toe box and wet it. Because when you pull it forward right to the toe box and then put glue right there, it provides a barrier and then the water won't penetrate and you end up with a really solid line of water right there, which is much more likely to make a watermark. So I like to pull it back and wet it, and that way I don't get such a defined line of water. Now that the toe box is shaped, I'm going to put a layer of contact cement on the toe box and a layer of contact cement on the vamp leather. And then I'll pull it over and they'll be stuck together. The cement that I'm using here it's a water-based contact cement substitute, so while I'm doing this, I'm not having to breathe fumes. There's no smell. And I carry it in my store, Sorel Notions and Findings. So now I'm going to flip this toe over and wipe in the toe. This is a close-up of the process of wiping in the toe. First, I'm going to pull it snug over the toe. put two nails in there to hold it. With some leathers you can pull it pretty snugly, but other leathers like calf you have to be careful and just pull it tight, otherwise it can split. This is alligator and I've never had any problems with alligator splitting. So I'm just going to work my way around the toe, putting these nails in close together putting the nails about two-thirds of the way in. I want them sticking up just a little bit so I'll have something to pull the wiping strip against. And now the wiping strip. It's just a it's just a strong piece of leather that's about a quarter of an inch wide. I'm going to nail it into place behind these nails. And then work out the wrinkles on this third and then the wrinkles around the toe and then the wrinkles around the final third of the toe. Pull it tight. Nail it into place. There we go. When I finish, I like to spray down the vamp just to help eliminate any watermark that might want to form right here where I wet the leather from underneath and this was all dry. The best part of my business is without a doubt all the really cool people I get to meet and email and talk to every day. Just the other day I got an email from a guy and it just cracked me up. He's so funny. Most of the email was in all caps and it ended with, you see everything is in capital letters. I do not know how that happened. I'm glad the boot business isn't as hard as this computer. And then it switched to little letters and he wrote, little letters, how did that happen? I bought my shop about 12 years ago. The building had been a restaurant. My shop area is where the kitchen was, and until last November, I rented the front space to a man who buys and sells Old West collectibles. He moved out just as I was beginning to need the space for my new business, Sorel Notions and Findings. With the gallery gone, though, I needed a new sign. Okay, show me what you did, Doug. Ladies and gentlemen, a new sign for Sorel Custom Boots. Yay! There we go. Doug just hung my new sign. 
because my old one said Sorel Custom Booth and Gallery, and I don't have a gallery anymore. By the way, this is Guthrie. Isn't it beautiful? Now I've moved all of my last to the front room, and I still have space for the glue and leather and supplies that I sell. This past weekend, I got to attend the Southwest Leather Workers Trade Show in Prescott, Arizona. It was sponsored by the Leather Crafters Journal, and I had a great time. The following clip is from my new friend Tommy, who's being trained by master bootmaker Al Reynolds from Wickenburg, Arizona. Tommy's expressing one of my long-held opinions that while boot making is fulfilling, satisfying, and infinitely rewarding, it's also incredibly difficult. I started, uh, my dad was a general contractor, and um, I grew up as a carpenter, and I learned to do many, many things with my hands over I became a working cowboy, I've been working leather for probably 30 years. I take up boot making, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, I'm not kidding, it's so difficult, there's nothing easy about any of it. Start to finish, everything's hard, and there's no no repetitive stuff either. You learn one thing, the next step totally different. Yep. And it, it is truly that, and it's going to take me a long time to master this. I'm the kind of guy I can pick up something I haven't mastered in 30 minutes. Not his 3115. <laughs> I am not kidding you. How long did it take me? I'm st I'm just I'm just barely getting comfortable now. I've been doing it for about a year and a half. What almost two years now? Hardest thing I've ever had to take up. Very big.